Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Fullerton City Council to order. Uh, Ms. City Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mayor Fitzgerald? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Flory? Here. Council Member Silva? Here. Council Member Whitaker? Here. Council Member Zara? Here. As we begin tonight's meeting, I just have a statement uh, to read about the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, I want you to know uh, that the health and safety of our community is paramount. I have the utmost confidence in our city leadership uh, as they work around the clock in coordination with our local, state, and federal health authorities. Uh, as you go about your daily lives, just take precautionary measures to ensure your health uh, and safety and the health and safety of your family. Stay home if you're sick. If you're concerned that you're experiencing sy symptoms of COVID-19, please call your health care provider. Uh, now more than ever, we need to look out for each other, look out for our neighbors, uh, and not instill panic, but ensure preparedness for what you need uh, to get you through a shelter in place or a quarantine. Um, now, please understand this doesn't mean you're locked in your homes. Uh, enjoy all that Fullerton has to offer during this time. And uh, I know in our family, we're talking a lot about counting our blessings. Um, enjoy our parks. Um, enjoy the trail system. Take the time to spend quality moments with your family uh, and maybe explore new places in Fullerton. Um, I would ask that in your neighborhoods, perhaps you set up a text tree with your neighbors or an email tree and that you check in on your elderly family members and your neighbors as well as those with underlying health conditions. Um, those human connections, especially during this time um, and in uncertain times like this, are really important. I recognize too many of our businesses are going to be forced to close during the duration of a shelter in place order and they have to alter their business practices. We need to support our local business owners as much as we can remotely. Um, so while we are encouraging social distancing, we want our business community to know uh, that the city supports our local businesses and I know that all of you in Fullerton do too. I urge you to order pickup and drive through or delivery services locally to help our local uh, business owners stay in business during this time. I'm proud of our city staff. I wanna thank each and every uh, city employee who is uh, working above and beyond um, to make sure that uh, we are prepared uh, for what may come. And uh, we know that this could take weeks um, or months to resolve, we're not sure, but we ask for your patience um, as we uh, work very, very hard to coordinate with county, state, and federal authorities to disseminate information in um, an accurate manner and in a timely manner. I know that we as a city will do everything we can to slow the pace of community spread so that we avoid unnecessary strain on our healthcare system and our emergency responders. Uh, we plan to continue uh, to communicate directly with you about the ever-changing landscape regarding COVID-19. And I would um, direct you always to the CDC's website uh, or the County Healthcare Agency website for more information. Of course, the City of Fullerton website um, will have the same information that those websites do as well. And with that, I'd like to lead us in an invocation. Dear God, we come to you with grateful hearts, God. Grateful for uh, the blessing of each day and for a community that cares for one another. And we lift up those in our community and those communities around the world who are struggling with this virus. And we pray for your healing and for your comfort. Give us wisdom as we make decisions that affect our community. Strengthen the city staff, the first responders, the healthcare workers, not only in our community, but all over. Um, to be able to respond uh, in the best way that we can uh, to this new crisis. In your name, amen. Mayor Pro Tem Flory, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Um, I would ask our uh, city attorney if we have a closed session report. We conducted closed session. There was no reportable action taken. And I do believe, Mr. City Attorney, that um, we have one item uh, to add to ratify uh, the city manager's declaration of the existence of a local emergency um, as an emergency item to tonight's agenda. So can you uh, talk the public through what we'll be doing? Sure. So typically, <clears throat> the city council may only act on items that are on the stated agenda, but if the city council finds by a two-thirds vote, in this case four affirmative votes, that there was an, that there's an, a need to take immediate action on this item and that this matter uh, occurred after the agenda was posted, then uh, we can add the item to the agenda. So I would make those findings as a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Council Member Zara. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? So that passes five to zero and we'll add that item to our agenda. I would now ask if any council member has any ex parte communications. And for the public, I just want to let you know that that's a fancy way of asking all the council members if they have spoken privately uh, about labor negotiations with any bargaining unit representative um, from our employee groups. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and uh, we have no presentations tonight. So now um, is the opportunity for the public and the city council to pull any consent items. And I'll just remind the public that um, we uh, have accepted online comments uh, for this meeting uh, in, uh, because of the extenuating circumstances of COVID-19. And so um, the public was allowed online to pull uh, consent calendar items or make public comments on things within our purview, but not on our agenda. Ms. City Clerk, did we have any uh, items to pull? Uh, we have a comment on item five. Um, I can just read it because it doesn't necessarily need to be pulled. Um, this is from James Wilson, a Fullerton resident. It says, what contingencies are being put in place for the possibility of key personal or large numbers of personnel becoming quarantined that are necessary to keep critical services operating? What plans are in place for backup personnel and backup to the backup to prevent disruption of water services as well as police and fire services? Okay, thank you very much. And I'll ask the city manager to be able to address some of those uh, after public comments, Mr. Uh, Zara? Yeah, Madam Mayor, uh, I'd like to pull item number 10 and ask for it to be continued for the next, uh, for an, a future session. So noted, any other uh, council members wish to pull any consent calendar items? I have one. Can will you turn your microphone on, please? I'm looking for it right now. Okay. It had to do with the... Uh, speeds on various streets. that is item 10, 10. Thank I, you. I pulled is that, that sorry yes it is well? it is uh, pertaining right. to the uh, speed limit adjustments and thank, survey thank you Ahmad okay uh, so um, with that then we will go ahead and move to public comments uh, so now is the time to hear public comments on items under our purview but not under our agenda or to make comments on any of the consent calendar items. Uh, and Ms. City Clerk, were there any other public comments that were submitted online? We received an email from Jose Trinidad Castaneda regarding the COVID-19 uh, issues, and I believe there's a copy at the dais for you. And I can either read the whole thing in the record or we can just go with the written copy. Okay, I think all of us have a written copy of that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Harrison? This one will be brief. I'll speak to the TBRA completely separately from this. Uh, and to n my public comments tonight are basically AB 2895 and an encouragement for everyone listening from in front of me or, well, behind me to keep after the legislators to see that that bill passes and that we mobile homeowners get the protections that all the renters in the entire state now have. That was it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to make public comments at this time? Hi, pleasure to be here on, on an interesting night with looking at access. Um, 
maybe with some of the things that have gone on and maybe the, you could pull the microphone up just a little oh, bit can you hear me a little bit better there there you go yeah the microphones is what's going to transmit whatever I know, but we'll get you. We have wipes, oh. and so please feel free. Well, wipes, those are worth a lot of money, by the way. <laughs> um, so um, tonight, I was hoping maybe you can speak a little bit, maybe the, the chief can, uh, some of the special powers that are going on. Um, I came down to get a overnight parking permit for my brother as an RV came by to visit. He's from out of state, and you can't get in. You have to call. So I called, and they said, we think there's going to be no overnight parking tickets so go ahead and park overnight so i just want to make sure that we can get that out to the public because uh, i didn't know about it and until i came down and stood out there and called i didn't know we were closed so anyway thank you i appreciate that i think there are some modifications we're making to some of our enforcement mechanisms so i i too will enjoy hearing them any other members of the public wish to make comments at this time Oh, good evening. Hi. Mayor, Please go ahead. Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Curtis Gamble, activist for the homeless and the residents also. Um, I'm going to speak about, let me see, what do I want to speak about today? Um, <clears throat> I just kind of want to put in a few words for um, Rancho La Paz Mobile Home Park. Um, we, <clears throat> we have about we have about 40 units there in the park that are available for sale, ranging anywhere from 40,000, maybe 30,000 to to around 220,000. These um, homes could be used as uh, shelters, uh, transitional housing, and permanent supportive housing for those seniors and other homeless who are in need. Um, they are pretty much available now. Um, also, <clears throat> at Rancho La Paz, they are, the owner has allowed the each each residents to have at least one roommate, uh, which we could take advantage of that and help people get into housing right today. Um, and also, the Rancho La Paz uh, owner has allowed them to have a caregiver, 370 residents. They all are allowed to have caregivers. Um, <clears throat> and let me see, the other thing is Rancho La Paz is behind, behind Rancho La Paz is a big open lot. Um, this lot could be used to address uh, some of the needs in the community, uh, such as, um, for example, like the governor, uh, Gavin Newsom's uh, trailers that he, he he's, he's given to different cities. Uh, so far, I think he gave LA like 10 of them. They set up to about 10 for families. Um, <clears throat> even though we have safe parking, which is working out pretty good. Um, the safe parking program is a six month program and after that is over with, uh, it would have to be moved if I'm correct. So um, I'm already looking for another space to help out with that. And also, <clears throat> I think um, this, uh, the, cor the coronavirus um, is, is important to, to get everyone safe, which we are doing, and I appreciate that. The other homeless people appreciate that. Um, I think that um, with the shelters that we have in the cities, um, that we can also address this problem with, um, with uh, the Governor Gavin Newsom's mobile units. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. Thank you very much. One last call for any other public speakers. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and bring this back to council. And I'll start with our city manager this evening um, to provide an update and to respond to, oh, actually, before you do that, um, uh, our city clerk, I do uh, think that Mr. Castaneda's uh, comments should be read. If he was here, 
he would be able to speak to them. So. Sure, I can read them. Uh, good evening, City Council and staff. My name is Jose Trinidad Castaneda. I urge you to take a swift action to protect Fullerton residents from the COVID-19 pandemic and to do our part in flattening the curve by voting in favor of approving the city manager's proclamation and use of emergency powers. In addition, I ask that you follow the County of Orange's lead on closing our public libraries to further eliminate the risk of transmitting this harmful, harmful disease. And there's a web link here. I ask you, I ask that you direct our chief of police to monitor the COVID-19 outbreak and ensure public safety by working with city staff on enforcing social distancing policies. I ask that you close Fullerton City Hall until April 30th and consider extending the closure until such a time that the pandemic has been reduced or eliminated. I ask that you follow all Fullerton employees to allow all Fullerton employees to work from home and discourage city staff from endangering themselves and residents by continuing operations at our public facilities. I ask that you postpone or cancel all private rentals of public facilities as well as outdoor organization, organizational sports schedules. I ask that you give special recognition and awards to city janitorial staff for their courageous work in protecting the public health. Sincerely, Jose Trinidad Castaneda. Thank you very much. Now with that, Mr. City Manager, um, uh, an update and response to comments. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. This is most certainly an unprecedented time in any city, the state and the nation and, and really the world when it comes down to it as far as what COVID-19 and the coronavirus um, is kind of forcing us to go through. Um, and I ask patients uh, with our residents, we're trying to make sure that we accommodate all their information needs. Uh, what we're always telling them to do, as you mentioned earlier, is to utilize the websites of the Centers for Disease Control, cdc.gov, and the California Department of Public Health, which is www.cdph.ca.gov, and the uh, Orange County Healthcare Agency, which is ochealthinfo.com. Uh, those sites all interrelate with each other and have the most up-to-date uh, and really the truthful information about what is going on and what is the best way to uh, work our way through this uh, public health crisis. So um, with that, uh, yes, we have a major crisis and the city is responding. Um, we will be uh, tonight after this settling some uh, closure plans. Uh, we have been you know, slowly ramping down uh, per the guidance that was given through the state and the federal prior to this point. Uh, today, the county uh, uh, health official basically issued uh, a public health uh, directive that is to keep people, it's based on the uh, shelter in place that is up in the uh, six or eight counties up in the Bay Area. Um, and there's a lot more information that will be coming out tomorrow. I will be uh, on a conference call with the county, with all other city managers to kind of ask a lot of questions because we do, because um, it was effective immediately. And, um, you know, so we're going to be working our programs here. We'll include full closure of the library to the public. Uh, it will include uh, pretty much the full closure almost of City Hall to the public, but we are working on some ways so that we can still do some business. The uh, public health order does allow for continuing uh, government operations, and it also has a lot of other exemptions that are there. So, um, you know, we'll have that up on our website soon. I know it's on the county website. So again, I ask that residents go to the county website to look at what this information is. Uh, I do want to talk about and actually have uh, uh, one issue that uh, the public uh, a comment that was read from Mr. Wilson who asked about, well, what happens if I'm taken out, if the chief is taken out? Um, and so we were, we are working on that too. We are, as you can see from the council meeting right now, where we have limited uh, public participation or public staff or, excuse me, public members, uh, we do have an overflow room at the library so we can accommodate if there were more people. We have spaced out the city council members and the department heads. Um, and we do that during the day too. So we have activated our emergency operations center here in the basement of City Hall. We have uh, now daily briefings at 7.30 a.m. and that's not the only briefing we do during the day. And even during that time, what we've done is a uh, WebEx. So some of the department heads are actually coming in online, even if they're in City Hall at their desk, 
just to limit the amount of people that are in the EOC and to try to make sure that we have that social uh, distancing. So um, we do have uh, plans in action uh, with the police department and the fire department. Of course, they have a little bit more detail about uh, secession planning and if a uh, team is uh, taken down by a member or um, else. I do would like uh, the police chief to talk about what is going to be going on at the police department and how we're going to be uh, reacting to a different issue. So, Chief. Thank you, sir. We'll start with the uh, staffing. As far as succession planning, my command staff, the executive team has been split up. No, no, all of us do not overlap and shift so that none of us can get each other sick. Um, we have somebody working from home so that they're prepared at any moment's notice to come in and take over for us. Um, as far as patrol staffing goes, we're splitting the department into three platoons. The three platoons would not overlap either so that there's no potential for cross-contamination. Um, and that, that is actually being done as we speak. There will be a, a modified schedule for those officers working patrol, uh, and I don't want to get into specifics of that as far as our deployment model. Um, our front counter is closed. We can still do business with you if you need police services as far as vehicle releases and reports, report calls. We start, we've set up a report center. So if you call our communication center and you need to file a police report for a host of different crimes, they will transfer you to one of our staff inside who are all not sitting together and they will take your report over the phone so you can still get police services that way. What we are not doing any of is fingerprinting services. That causes too much close contact with our staff and the public and we will not resume that until we get clearance from the public health officials that that uh, potential contamination is passed. Um, we are focused on handling life safety matters only, and we're doing that because it frees up staff to be in this contingency mode for secession planning and other staff needs. And we are also participating at a county level in mutual aid across the county as, as a resource and tapping into the resources from the county. And that's what we're doing right now. I just have a follow-up question, uh, Chief. Uh, what, what's uh, the, how do you handle detainees and uh, the jail? So... In essence, if you're a misdemeanor, it's likely you're going to receive a citation. Um, if it's a felony, we can still book our jail facility is not closed. In fact, we're discussing with our North County partners of regionalizing and using one facility at a time so that any other facility isn't overexposed. And then we also have the county jail that we can book you straight to. So felons are going straight to jail and we're still doing that. Um, uh, one last uh, question as far as our um, homeless liaison officers and in, in uh, managing our homeless uh, population. So we're still doing, we, of course, you know, our service providers have cut back their outreach times. Um, our officers are observing the six-foot distance when in, in, encountering members of our homeless population, but we're still, our HLOs are still out there in their normal shifts, triaging the homeless. Uh, of course, we're trying to get them connected with services because we fear that if this were to make it to the homeless population, it could be completely devastating uh, for that population as well. Um, so it's it's sort of business as usual, but with all the precautions in place. And I can address the parking issue right now as well. We have relaxed the street sweeping issue. We are fully aware that everybody is at home, right. kids aren't in school, so most of those people that leave during the day and leave take their cars away from the street so we can facilitate, we're not issuing citations for that. We're being incredibly selective. Uh, we'll still respond to someone's call for service if they call about overnight parking, but I've instructed my staff to triage that, and I've asked the supervisors to reach out to the caller and explain the situation and why we do or do not take enforcement action in that particular circumstance. Um, so those things will be done on a select basis. But for sure, street sweeping and all other parking will be done on an as-needed basis and coupled with a call for service, not proactively. Thank you, Chief. Um, I'd like to bring up uh, Chief Lozier, who actually is, uh, when we are conducting our emergency operations center, he is kind of the, the chief in charge on that. And please use a uh, wipe before you use the microphone. Can't have him go down, but I have a replacement. You should be able to auction off that package of wipes. <laughs> they are not available anywhere. Don't throw that away. Good evening, uh, Council, Madam Mayor. Uh, Adam Lozier, I'm the Fire Chief. 
uh, and I'll follow the same lines that the police chief uh, spoke of as far as succession planning. Uh, so for our particular situation where we, have a, where we have a shared command staff, we have two chief officers that are facilitating the emergency preparedness and uh, the emergency operations plan for the city of Fullerton. And then I have two chief officers that are doing the same up in Brea. Um, whereas I'm overseeing both of those and making sure they're moving in a positive direction. We are merely the facilitators of that, working with the other departments um, to see that we're doing our best to continue city services and provide uh, those essential services to our citizens. Um, and then on the, same, on the same part, we are also doing, taking proactive measures to make sure that your first responders, the fire department in particular, as Chief Dunn spoke of the police department, uh, are taking the measures so that we, our staff remains intact. Um, if, uh, if our staff, we only have, we have limited amount of employees uh, to respond to calls. If they begin to be exposed and isolated, um, obviously that starts reducing our ability to serve the public and do what we normally do. And in the course of, of, of this particular scenario, this is what we normally do. Um, so we are taking just the extra precautions that are uh, being recommended by the CDC um, as far as personal protective equipment um, and directives to our personnel from the station to the apparatus um, to even going home to make sure that they are, they are staying as, as, uh, as clean as possible. The things they use and touch after they've come in contact with patients uh, is remaining clean and that when they go home that they are also as clean as possible and using best practices. So we have control over that obviously while, while they're here and we're trying to do our best working with our labor association to push out that message so that their families remain safe as well. Um, we are, uh, what else have we done here? Um, also in communication with a lot of the Orange County fire chiefs, much like the city managers, to continue to move based upon the constant evol evolution of this uh, of the situation, um, and I think today we saw another example of that circle getting a little a little tighter. Um, but you know we're working very well together to make sure that we are we have a plan in place, um, and that we are taking care of business, and that you can feel confident that those services and what we provide uh, is maintained per directives that are being handed down. So. Um, that's all from fire. Any any questions? Yeah, I do. Yes. Chief Lozier, can you explain what the purpose of the of the emergency operations center is? I mean, why is it there? Sure. So the emer the purpose of the emergency operations center it acts as a as a conduit. So you have the forces that are out in the actual field performing those field operations, um, and the EOC brings together the people that can help support those operations. Now this is a different this is a different circumstance, um, and more than likely, and last time we used this would have been our uh, the Lahaba earthquake that we had, where we need we had things that actually we were able to visually see a problem and go fix those problems. Uh, that is more of a response where people are getting their vehicles and responding to that. This is a different scenario in that we are preparing for. Um, what could be reduction in services, uh, identifying non-essential non and essential services, making sure that those are all ready. We have plans in place for um, as that circle gets a little tighter. So in this instance, we are doing all the preparatory and planning um, so that we, are, we stay ahead of those, those directives. Mm -hmm. Whereas a normal, in a, another normal emergency, um, we would come together and we would support the needs of the troops that are in the field. As that emergency is mitigated and the pendulum swings, swings back to the, the uh, recovery piece, that's where the financial side and the damage assessment piece comes into play because the overall goal is to get the city back into normal operations as soon as possible and uh, seek any available reimbursements for the city as well. And if a person has an emergency, uh, are they going to be using the normal channels to, to notify you, uh, for, for example, if somebody's experiencing a medical emergency or there is an accident with injuries? Are, is it business as usual or will people be calling 911? Yes, uh, business as usual for the 911 system. 
Um, and there is there is some triaging that's being done, additional questions that the dispatchers, dispatchers are asking the patients, um, depending on what their call for service is. Um, and that's to both give heads up to the to the police and fire departments that are responding to any of the calls that are going on right now so that they can be prepared um, with the proper protective equipment, disting, distancing if necessary. Um, and that's it. And, and if there's a water main break, do they call the city? Yes. And there will be a response then? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Chief you. Lozier, truly and as always, appreciate what you and the men and women of uh, the Fullerton Fire Department do. And Chief Dunn, um, the same, of course, for your officers. Mr. City Manager, did you have... Just one uh, last bit, uh, you know, so we do not know how long this will go. We are experimenting with the e-comments, as the city clerk and yourself said earlier. So um, we want to encourage people because we want to make sure that we are here and open for public business. Um, this is kind of that basic level. We have to be here for the public. That's why we're allowing folks in, even with um, strange-looking X's on the chairs. But um, do ask people look uh, at the e comment section and uh, come April 7th that we are still under these uh, guidelines and directives uh, we will look to see how we can continue to do what we're doing versus um, shutting down or not having the meeting and uh, the question I have for you is uh, as uh, Chief Dunn said there are uh, some enforcement changes within the police department uh, are there also in other city departments that we in the public should know about uh, absolutely. So we're going to be, um, you know, a lot of things are going to be uh, triaged, as the word was used. So it depends on the severity, depends on health and safety, and health and safety is always number one. Um, but for, you know, parking issues, some uh, rudimentary code enforcement issues, uh, we will not be going out into the field and doing. Um, also on, um, you know, so... SB 988 on the water, which uh, extends the water shutoff. Uh, we'll make sure that people have water no matter what happens. Um, so we really want to work with people to make sure. Because so you're saying that people who might have been um, at risk of having their water shut off for payment issues during this time, you're Correct. not doing that? Correct. Yes. So we really want to make sure because we know the effect to the economy and the effect to our residents um, is going to be great. Mm -hmm. And we want to work with them on that, um, work with the businesses, make sure that they're surviving it, that they can rebound just as much as, you know, doing the emergency operations center and ensuring that city uh, business rebounds. We want to make sure that uh, everything, right. our economy, our businesses, our residents rebound too. So yeah. thank you very much. Uh, I have Mr. a question. Silva, mm -hmm. And yes. then feel free to give your report, Mr. Perfect. Silva. Thank you. A uh, question on the code enforcement and, and so on. Are we still doing inspections? Because I know if people are building and they have a roof they're fixing, we're still going out there and signing off if... Yes, we are. Okay. Yeah. So right now we're doing most of those external. Um, we will kind of uh, play it by ear if we go inside. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, for all those external reviews. And then what we'll be putting onto our website either later tonight or very early tomorrow morning is how we're doing business for um, development services to continue. So because there's still going to be contractors that are needing to do jobs, there's still going to be people who want and need different things done with their house. So we have to be here to make sure that goes forward. Thank you. And uh, uh, so, again, I just want to echo the, the mayor's. Uh, uh, want to thank the staff, the chief, chiefs, and all our staff for uh, being on top of the situation. And I know it changes by the minute, by the hour, it seems like, when it does. And so, so thank you all for uh, for being uh, flexible in handling this. It, it's really uh, appreciated and, and acknowledged by some of the residents that I've talked to. And, and just on that note, I do want to have a couple of um, uh, repeat some announcements from from yesterday re in regards to the state to help. Uh, if you haven't heard, uh, the the legislation, the the assembly and the senate have uh, closed. Everyone's down in their local offices, and they're doing that just from the abundance of care. Again, they don't want to get a group of 40 or a group of 80 people together in one area. But uh, just a couple other notes that uh, yesterday or the, early this week, the, the governor and, and the legislature uh, passed SB 89, which uh, authorizes the governor to spend uh, 
$500 million for uh, the relate, his related uh, uh, proclamation of the state of emergency, and he's allowed to go up to $1 million for any additional support that this coronavirus may may cause. And also, uh, SB uh, 117 is giving the public schools $100 million, well, not giving, but uh, there's a $100 million budget to help the public instruction uh, to ensure the safety of the school sites under the viral outbreak. So the, uh, I think the governor is, our governor is on this, and uh, we're taking direction from them. And uh, also, if you have any questions regarding to what the state is doing, uh, you can call the Assemblywoman Quirk Silva's office at 714-525-6515. And again, this is for updates on state matters that maybe uh, – uh, they're taking on or any other things. Uh, they'll be open with a skeleton crew, but they will be responding to any needs from the community just as our city is. And one last thing, uh, for the parents out there of the Fulton School District, uh, this district is serving lunch at, at, at many other sites from 11 to 1 for our students. Uh, you can go to their website and find out what uh, I know. A, a, well, I know Nicholas Woodcrest, Richmond, Pacific Drive, and a few other ones are serving lunch, but I think all of the sites are serving lunch. So if the, if you need to go out and get uh, lunch or breakfast uh, for the for your kids, you can do that at one of the public schools. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Councilman Zara. Yes, thank you. Um, again, thank you for our uh, staff, our uh, public uh, safety uh, staff as well, and uh, our chiefs and our city manager for um, all the work that they've been doing. Uh, this is definitely trying times for us, and uh, but I, I know that we're a, a very strong community here, and we will pull through. Um, I do want to um, to ask uh, that we um, formalize uh, what the um, I, I know the the governor um, authorized uh, the uh, cities to look into uh, suspending evictions. Um, and I'd like to uh, consider that for our city. Uh, so uh, I'd like to ask if a council member would uh, give me a second to agendize um, uh, the uh, suspension of all evictions in our city for both residents and, and, uh, and businesses during this time. Um, it might require a, sec a special meeting, which um, I'd be uh, uh, also inclined to ask for. Um, so if I can get a second for that, I would be. A, a well, I'll second that, but I, but I know that the state is well anyway. The yeah, if we need to. The I, state, I can second the state that. only, um, the the governor only put together the mechanism that allows city to, to allow cities to to formalize this, but we the cities still have to take action on it. No, I'll, I'll second that. Thank you. And then I'd like to see if we can bring this back. I don't know if it's possible to bring it back. Uh, on Thursday of uh, this week so that we can uh, look into it as quick as possible, soon as possible, or maybe Friday for a special meeting. Um, I, 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 for one, am concerned about staffing um, and the ability to actually get something back to us by then and for all of us to reconvene so quickly. Well, then we need 72 hours, right? Because we have, I mean, we, you know, rent is coming up April 1st. So these, these are issues that and people, we know a lot of people are struggling right now. And uh, some people are in, in their homes. Uh, some people don't have a paycheck anymore. And I think this is something of, of an urgent matter. So um, whenever it's the, the, the soonest the poss you know, possible, that would be, uh, I'd be okay with that. What, uh, Madam Mayor, what I can suggest is that we work with the city attorney's office. I do know that uh, based on the executive order by the governor, there are a lot of cities that are looking at it. Unfortunately, um, kind of what the state does to us often is uh, they say, hey, here's a great idea and we're going to do this, but then they um, push it down upon us to actually implement it. So um, we can look at what some other cities, I know there's several cities, uh, Santa Ana, Anaheim is looking at it. Uh, many in our, uh, LA County, and so we'll look at what they're doing, talk to the city attorney's office. We can provide a memo back to the city council, and at that time, based on our rules of doing a special meeting, uh, because our next meeting would not be until April 7th, we can be directed accordingly otherwise. Yeah, I, I, let, let's get an update, and then we can always request. Uh, I mean, I think we. Um, if we need, see a need for it, uh, I'm sure we would uh, reconvene to do that. And, and I know uh, they've been working on it. Well, 
just recently, but before the, the governor issued his order, we were looking at that, correct? Because I, I, I can't... Or I, Not on a, an eviction ban, but there's been other things, like tonight is uh, the expansion of the guidelines for the tenant-based rental assistance for veterans, which helps. Um, but what we can do is by, uh, I, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, and so by... Uh, Tuesday of next week to give us a week, we can get a memo back to you um, as to what it means, where it's at, what it would require of us. Um, and within that memo, it could be explained as to how it could be brought back in a special meeting format. All right. I would be okay with that. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I also am uh, just wanted to see if we can ask that um, also our parks uh, the playgrounds be cleaned. Uh, I know, I you know, schools out it seems, and kids are playing. And I I notice a lot of kids playing in the playground, so it would be great to see if uh, we can clean them on a regular basis so that uh, kids are. I do, uh, I do think we are, um, Mr. City Manager. Uh, that is correct. We're uh, upping the frequency of cleaning, and as we look to kind of. Uh, wind down staff operations in the uh, public facing side we're looking to redirect some staff to also help us in those efforts okay. so and um, then uh, the other thing is uh, on the uh, I appreciate uh, the chief on the parking uh, situation um, obviously in the denser areas this is a, a, a very big issue especially uh, for lower income families so I appreciate this uh, I don't know if there's any need for a formal suspension of of ticketing um, but at this point I'll, I think I'm satisfied with your with your plan uh, chief um, I I'm also I, I do want to make sure that um, in this process that we do take into consideration our own employees as far as uh, especially our part-timers who uh, I do not want to see them um, in any way uh, their hours cut so that, but rather direct their uh, services into something uh, useful uh, that we can do um, in the community. So uh, that is something I um, I hope that uh, we can see happen. I don't know if you can comment on that, Mr. Manager. Um, well, as we go about this process, we're looking to, you know, redirect staff accordingly and all that stuff. So um, it's a day by day and, uh, you know, our goal is to make sure that we have enough work and there is plenty of work for our staff to do and working with the employee associations to make sure that there's flexibility and also what they expect. Um, and then also just making sure that they understand that if there's a sickness in their family or they have to stay home that we could redirect at that point and uh, the city services can maintain itself uh, through that kind of rearranging of staff um, I don't know what to expect over the next four weeks. Mm -hmm. But I have, just so you know, the city manager and I have talked a lot about the fact that um, our number one priority, just like it is for the residents here in town, uh, it's the same for our employees, that they have um, a safe and healthy um, place to work. And there is so much work to be done that um, there, are, there are plenty of reasons for people who work for the city of Fullerton to come to work. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that um, um, I asked that question and uh, that we are, um, we get the response. So thank you for, for the response. Uh, the last thing I'd like to say is that uh, I would like us to see as we start settling into this, uh, there will be some long-term effects. I'd like to see what options we have for our small businesses uh, as far as uh, uh, what we can do as a city. Uh, and, um, and uh, you know, this could be something that we could start looking into uh, down the line. Um, la I just want to say, uh, as far as uh, at the water district, I know a lot of people have been going out and, uh, and buying bottled water. Uh, the Orange County Water District has uh, put out some notices as far as uh, water quality. Our water is drinkable. Uh, it is up to standards. Uh, it is tested. And uh, there is really no need to uh, to stock up other than just having some extra bottles would be fine. Uh, but uh, um, and if you can learn more, uh, the COVID virus does not is not in our water, and uh, it, we are um, our water is drinkable. I drink it without 
um, filters. So um, on that, you can go to ocwd.com and check out also some of the um, additional uh, safety policies that we have put in for the Orange County Water District. Um, all tours have been canceled towards the end of April. Uh, and there has been some also staffing restrictions as well. So uh, again, ocwd.com, you can find all that information. Uh, my monthly meeting uh, this month is canceled. Uh, I am looking into uh, possibly doing some live streaming or some online thing, but don't hold me on that. It's, there's a lot going on, So, but I will try my best. Uh, but for now, uh, no monthly meeting this month. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Thank you. Uh, there are many unknowns for all of us uh, going forward for the next several weeks at least or many months p potentially. But one of the concerns uh, that we should have is the opportunities that exist even in times like this with activity being down generally and with so much of the public being at home, staying at home, sitting by their phones in large part. There is much in the way of imposed inactivity. But this does create opportunities for a city government to be able to work in directions of catching up on infrastructure repair and on maintenance and other activities which at times when the economy is humming along, it's very difficult to find the opportunity to do that. Now we may be restrained somewhat by weather, by, by rains uh, in some of these uh, efforts, but I would, I would say what's really important is to uh, reassure the public that uh, we aren't just wasting resources during this time, but that we are active in terms of addressing needs that we have on an ongoing basis. Uh, so I, I think just like with most situations, uh, we've been dealt a difficult hand on this, but we need to find the opportunities that exist within that condition. And there are opportunities, I think, where we could make headway and catch up on things which otherwise, uh, you know, there are time impediments to our uh, achieving most of these things. So I'd, I'd like to see efforts toward tangible um, improvements. And there are many that are needed in the city. And that would help to reassure the public that we're not just wasting that resource of, of all these uh, these capable hands here at the city during this time. Uh, again, we could be uh, inactive for some period of time or relatively inactive and plan and plan, or we can get about business which doesn't create additional risks for the employees and doesn't really risk the public, but does take care of necessary business. So I'd like us to see what we can do to identify those opportunities and focus our time and efforts there as well. Thank you, Ms. Flory. Well, we certainly are living in an unprecedented time, as our city manager has said. And there's a lot of people that are hurting already in our community. Uh, calls to mind uh, parents who can't work because they don't have care for their children who are not in school. We have our uh, bar owners and all of their serving and wait staff who now no longer have any work. And there is no there is no cover for those people at this time. Um, there is also a lot of confusion that leaves people rattled. We're seeing all kinds of messages on social media. Much of it is inaccurate. Just this weekend, I got three <clears throat> summaries of how to deal with coronavirus, how to s stand up in the morning, take a deep breath, Hold your breath for 10 seconds, and if you can do that, then you know you don't have the virus. Drink lots of water because the water will wash the virus down into your stomach where the stomach acids will kill it. All of it dead wrong. All of it purportedly from professors at Stanford. And so these messages go out, and we all read them as gospel, and they are just dead wrong. The confusion also results because we're being told something different every single day. Um, it's affecting us in small and large ways. I have a, my license, driver's license expires in early April. So in mid-December, I made an appointment to go in and get my real ID and renew my driver's license. 
the earliest I could get the appointment was March 19th, which is day after tomorrow. So I took a little spin by the DMV parking lot today to see, is it crowded? Are there people there? Is it going to be empty like the movie theaters or what? The line comes out the back of the door. You know how everybody knows on Valencia. In Fullerton, we have a DMV office, and the entrance is to the back. People are lined up outside the door all the way to the end of the building. Was there six feet between each one of those people? No, there was not. And yet even our Governor Newsom is saying, uh, you know, shelter in place. If you're over 65, stay at home. I'm married to a 79-year-old man with many health issues, and I'm terrified I'm going to bring something evil back into our home. Because if that happens, he's basically a goner. Anyway, um, in my travels today, I went to Costco. And from the outside, it looked okay. But you go inside, half the people who weren't wearing masks. But everybody was, it just seemed to me that people were very, very courteous to one another. And they were patient with one another. Went over to Stater Brothers, just wanted to pick up some Split peas and ham hocks, soup, summer day, gone, nothing, nada, nothing is there. But I'm not panicking about it because Mayor Fitzgerald says, well, she went to Ralph's today and they were fully stocked. So there you go. Anyway, it is time for us to be kind and to love each other. There are going to be a lot of people our acquaintances, friends, family, who are going to need help through a difficult time. And we have to be cautious about that help so that we don't make a situation worse, but at the same time, we have to help each other and love each other. And if things aren't going perfect on the city side, you can take it from me that our staff has more than their hands full at the present time, and we just have to be patient, not only with our city staff, our public safety employees, the grocery store clerks, the school teachers who aren't working. It's, um, it's probably one of the most pervasive things that I have lived through in my lifetime. And at first, I discounted it a lot. You know, the media is making us all panic. But it appears that that may not be the case. So we have to be careful. So... With that in mind, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, go ahead and get through this agenda now. Uh, we'll move to the consent calendar. Item 10 has been pulled. Any other items that need to be pulled? Without that, Mr. Zara, would you like to make a motion? I'll move the uh, consent calendar. Okay, I would second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that passes five to zero. And then uh, item 10 then will be moved to the back uh, and will be our last item. And so we'll move to item number 12. Uh, Matt Folks, our Director of Community and Economic Development is going to make a presentation or turn it over to one of your ABLE staff. Thank you, Mayor Fitzgerald. I'm gonna be presenting from back here tonight. Okay. Uh, I have a very short presentation that I will move through very quickly and we can get to a decision. Uh, the item before you is an amendment to the tenant-based rental assistance program guidelines. As you all recall, back in August of last year, you adopted a tenant-based rental assistance program for seniors living in the Rancho La Paz and Rancho Fullerton <laughs> mobile home parks, and you had allocated $350,000 of home funds, so those are non-general funds uh, for this program. We are currently providing rental assistance to 23 households, and we have seven more uh, pending, just the submittal of some documents or getting some inspections. So we have quite a few getting into the program, and we've already started issuing checks. Uh, this, fund, this came about mostly uh, as a result of the sale of the Rancho La Paz Mobile Home Park, which did result in some space rent increases, uh, which has been challenging to seniors, especially on fixed incomes. Uh, the city had previously had a tenant-based rental assistance program a number of times during the last 10, 12 years, uh, most recently in 2008 and 2016. The funding that we get from home funds is federal funds, and so we don't know from year to year how much is going to be allocated, uh, which is why the program dropped off those last two times. Our recommended action uh, is, is really two parts, even though there's four bullet points up there. The first is to expand the guidelines to also allow senior veterans, either in the mobile home parks or citywide, to be eligible for the program. 
Uh, and then the last three items there are really just cleanup items within the program guidelines. Uh, we, when we adopted them, we adopted them fairly quickly. And as we've implemented the program, we've realized we need to provide a little bit more direction to folks in terms of being able to establish some small amount of minimum rent, uh, being able to provide assistance for residents under 55 if they are disabled and living in the Rancho La Paz or Rancho Fullerton parks, and then creating a, a defined maximum amount of assets in order to qualify for the assistance in the program. So with that, our recommendation is to approve an additional $200,000 for next fiscal year's home funds to continue to implement the tenant-based rental assistance program, as well as amendment to the guidelines, which again is focused on expanding the program to allow senior veterans citywide to participate. And if it's approved tonight, we have a number of uh, different organizations, both in the city and nearby, that we would be reaching out to to promote this program, including the VFW, American Legion, and others. Thank you, Mr. Folks. Um, thank you for the shamrock on the corner of your presentation. I had I had to put it in. It, I love it was it. a much sunnier disposition when I put that in, but I'm it's still St. Patrick's Day. I'm glad you left it because it's still St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Um, and then my question uh, for you is: You said 23 people have taken us up um, on this rental assistance. How much does that total? That's totaling over the course of the program. That's a little over 250000 I don't have the exact number, but it's, it's a substantial amount over the life of the, the two-year program, month to month. Okay. Thank you very much. It, Are there other questions, Mr. Uh, yeah. Is the the 200000 is that on top? Is that additional to the 300000 That is in addition to, oh. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seeing no other questions, I'd open this up to members of the public. If you wish to speak on this item, let's not line up like we normally do, Mr. Harrison. Why don't you come up first? Other members of the public, um, as you see the person um, coming back to their seat from the dais, will keep a proper social distance and please come up and speak. Sorry about the noise. Okay. I have to say I am surprised to see you here. I know your wife hasn't been well. Uh, thank you. I, uh, uh, I, wish she, I would be best. here with her now, but yes. she insisted I come because... I Part of her illness is the tension we've I been understand. under. All right, some of this is slightly obsoleted by the presentation, but I'm going to go with the little bit I do have. My name is Todd Harrison, and I am one of the endangered residents of Rancho La Paz Mobile Home Park. You're about to consider changes and hopefully allocate more funds for the TBRA program that is helping some of my neighbors. That makes tonight's meeting worth the personal risk of being here, and I thank you for the chance to be heard. The existing or even modified TBRA does nothing for me directly. So I'm here on behalf of all of those at Rancho La Paz that it does help. As we became a community with a common enemy, we were shocked to discover at-risk veterans living at Rancho La Paz. There's a neighbor of mine who is a uh, World War II veteran after paying his previous rent level, he would have enough for his food budget of two sacks of potatoes a month. So any extension you can do of that program and the easing of the guidelines or prioritizing for veterans has the enthusiastic approval of everyone who was at our HOA meeting uh, Monday two weeks ago. We are very much for anything you can do further for these, for these people that are even more than some of us who are just old and sick and on fixed incomes, these veterans who served us and expected to be re repaid in kind over the years deserve this extra help that they very badly need. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Social distancing isn't working at my house. It doesn't work. Come here. Put your hands off. Back. You know what you guys are all doing? You're doing the ball on the end, but you're not doing the part that you hold. I don't so, touch Todd. It. Oh, well, Todd was. That's why I so all I'm thinking. Right. Charge for hazmat cleaning. Uh, exactly. You'll get my bill. Okay, let's Thank just, you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as a combat veteran, um, I just want to say this is a great program. Would you state your name, please? Oh, Doug Cox. And Thanks. I sit on the, the planning commission, and it's always my rule of thumb to never come up and speak. My way is to go through channels. But I had this discussion with Councilwoman Flory a while back when it came up, and she said, you know, you've got some great ideas. You should come up. I said, that's nah, not my 
gig. I don't want to do that. I, you know, you take the king's coin, you do the king's work, you do it in the background. But um, this is something that's more important to me. And one of the things that I see for the veterans is that there's a caregiver program that veterans have. And you have older veterans like um, World War II vets, Korean War vets, even Vietnam vets I've helped to get a caregiver program. Um, they're either on medication, their spouse is helping to take care of them, they have surgeries. Anything they have that's a disability rating from the VA, they qualify for that caregiver program. There's three tiers. The first tier is about 1200 a month, <clears throat> and it, it's paid directly to their wife. You know, it's always great. The, the, the spouse, I should say the spouse the will get it. You know, their caregiver at home. Um, the second tier is about $2,800, $2,900, and I think the third tier is around $4,000. So I think there should be some counseling that might be involved for veterans to say, here's some linkages. I know the county health department, they do that a lot with linkages. And we can provide them uh, some of those linkages through uh, the Cal Veteran uh, website, but also these veteran organizations, they know about these programs, and we really should counsel these veterans in these services because most of the World War II vets just don't talk about it. And yet they have PTSD, they have other issues, and they qualify for these programs and disability ratings. There's up to $3,500 a month they can get for these disability ratings at 100%, and it's all tax-free as well as the caregiver money that comes in. That's all tax-free. So those are some of the income revenues that they should be getting, but most of them don't know about. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Ms. Frizzell, are you handling this, the administration of this program? I saw you taking notes on what Mr. Cox was saying, um, and I'm going to get your title wrong, but we do have a director of economic development, an economic, De please. Deputy director of community and economic development. Okay. Community, and, and so it is Ms. Frizzell's job to work on economic development issues and housing issues. So thank you so much for that. Are there other speakers on this item? Um, Mayor, City Council, Curtis Gamble, activist, homeless. Um, I I read over the um, uh, uh, the the information, and I like the tenant-based rental assistance programs for the for the rental La Paz homeless, no rental La Paz um, um, residents. Um, I think it's good. Um, any any help that the seniors can get um, would be it's, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to take more, but this is good, very good. Um, again, <clears throat> I like to remind you that I'm, and this is a part of the rental La, La Paz, because I'm on the Continuum of Care Board, which um, we get twenty six million dollars, and our thing is to assist people with that funding. So I would like for you guys to come out and be a part of the uh, board meetings once a month because <clears throat> when I go to those board meetings, they're saying, well, we can't find um, shelter. We can't find transitional housing. We can't find permanent supportive housing. And then over here at Rental La Paz, I hear them saying, well, we can't find money. We have money every year, $26 million. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I just like to say that even with this program, we're going to need different types of angles to make it work. Um, I'm a former 14-year OCTA bus driver. We, we need to get more of the drivers um, as operators of, of different shelters and to, to participate in the community uh, assisting the residents. Because in, Mr. We, Gamble, this needs to be about veterans' uh, use of uh, home funds oh, okay. for rental assistance for veterans. Okay, um, I myself am a veteran, um, so yeah, the funding for veterans is very important. As a matter of fact, um, I have a, a, a VASH voucher, which I've been using for three years at the, um, at the uh, uh, um, and it's been, it's been very good. So any help that we can bring to the veterans is outstanding because we have a lot of homeless veterans. We have many veterans that are there in Rancho La Paz, and so 
if we get out, a lot of them, again, they won't tell you that they're veterans because they're so proud that they just won't ask you for the help. So yeah, all, any type of program that you have for the veterans would be of great help. And I'd like to bring that program to the Rancho La Paz residents, veterans, and get them uh, where they can uh, have a more secure uh, life. My, my uh, rent is like $50 a month on $1,000 apartments. So any of these programs would help out a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gamble. Are there other members of the public who wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council. Uh, I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? I just wanted to, I'm sorry, just one point of clarification because uh, Commissioner, or I don't know, Doug brought it up. Um, Commissioner the, Cox. Commissioner yes. Cox. He's Commissioner Cox to me. He's, he's Commissioner he Cox to me, but he's Doug to the tonight. rest of us. Yes. Correct. So um, just a clarification uh, for his point, the, the incomes that are received uh, from either live-in aids or as income for armed forces does not count against your ability to qualify for the program. So we have specifically excluded those incomes as uh, gross annual income in the calculation. So thank just you wanted very to clarify. Much. Thank you. Yeah, no, I just want to say thank you for, for bringing this and working on it. And uh, I know that uh, last year there was uh, a, a veteran and his wife who were... Um, uh, evicted from their apartment they could not afford another apartment uh, despite all the help that we try to provide them they, they're still struggling and I think this is a program that's going to help a lot uh, of veterans in our city who may not qualify for other programs and um, and I'm I'm very happy to uh, to support this and Ms. City Clerk, I should have asked you earlier on this item, are there any electronically submitted comments on this item? We have no other submitted comments for any other items. Okay, thank you. Um, then we'll go ahead and take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes five to zero. We'll move on to item number 13, road maintenance and rehabilitation, SB1 funds going to Euclid and Orangethorpe. Mr. Grantham. Good evening to you. Nice to see you. You're not wearing green. I'm English. But I can't. <laughs> You're English. <laughs> With all this social distancing, there shall be no pinching. So you're off the hook. I, I am actually English, so. <laughs> it is what it is. Hurry up. Let's get, let's get going on this presentation. Well, hopefully it's a little <laughs> bit of uh, good news uh, this evening. So let's run through this. How are we doing this? Okay, uh, very quickly for the public, um, I'm sure everyone's heard about SB1 from now on uh, over the last few years. Um, it's intended as to help local agencies out with the rising cost of construction and maintaining our roads. Quite frankly, without it, the city of Fullerton will be even a deeper hole than we are right now. As you can see, we're into the fourth year of this program. We've got uh, one project we've completed two projects that will be done this summer, Commonwealth and Euclid. Um, and the reason we're here tonight is because there are certain requirements that we have to go through in order to receive the funding. One of them being a public review of our proposed projects, i.e. this presentation. I will point out that I did take this to INRAC in February 26. And INRAC is? The Infrastructure and Natural Resources Advisory Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they were very supportive of the project, um, so they have their recommendation to council to move forward with the, the recommendations. Um, I also, as part of these requirements, will need the city council to approve the resolution that identifies the projects that I'm about to explain right now. So two projects. Uh, project number one also could be called Euclid Street Phase 2. Uh, so we're going to pick up where we, we leave off this summer on Euclid Street, and we're going to go all the way from Fern Drive to Bassentry Road. Um, off of uh, Euclid, there's a small cul-de-sac, Valley View Place. It makes sense to go ahead and address the mm -hmm. street at that time as well. Um, here is the picture, the, the limits of the work. Um, it's about 0.7 of a mile, and the roadway improvement cost is, is going to cost approximately $1.75 million. At this time, there's no expected major sewer or water work that is required. Next project, I'm sure a lot of people are happy to hear about, Orange Thorpe, Woods mm -hmm. to Highland. And there's the picture. Mr. Zara, we're all happy to hear about it. Mm -hmm. uh, this project's about half a mile, will cost about $940,000. 
Uh, no major water work, but uh, sewer maintenance is looking into doing some significant sewer work. If they do, they will help contribute to the cost of this project. Fantastic. So, recommendation. Uh, adopt the proposed resolution listing Euclid Street and Orange Slope Avenue for pavement rehabilitation for fiscal year 2020-21, funded by SB1, the Road Repair and Accountability Act of 2017. Thank you so much. Questions? No, okay. um, I'm just excited. Folks, we're getting ours Thorpe finally getting done. Yeah. All right. And to get the show on the road, I will move that we adopt the resolution number 2020 next in order. Okay. And I will second. Okay, and so now's the time for members of the public, if you wish to speak on this item, please come forward. And uh, Ms. Williams, do we have any e-comments on this? No? Okay, seeing no public comments, we'll bring it back to council. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> those opposed? And that passes five to zero. With that, we'll go ahead and move on to item number 14, revision to compensation for confidential and non-represented employees. Ms. Chang, our director of- Admin services. Admin <laughs> services, I love it. Thank you. I will get these titles down, <laughs> just in time for me not to be mayor anymore. Um, the purpose of the presentation this evening is to provide an overview of the proposed resolution changes relating to compensation for confidential and non-represented employees. Um, to provide some background, a confidential employee is one who, in the course of his or her duties, has access to information relating to the city's administration, and um, the confidential non-represented unit is not a recognized bargaining unit. Per, um, however, parameters for compensation terms or employment are set by City Council via resolution. There are currently 16 classifications within the unit, 13 are budgeted positions, 12 of which are filled. Positions are a mix of general and mid-management employees within administration, administrative services, and human resources. Um, just to highlight some of the significant changes that are proposed in the amended resolution, um, there are no across the board increases, retroactive paid day off for December 26, 2019, restructured holiday leave program, a one-time medical expense reimbursement of $3,000 for CalPERS PEPRA members of the unit, $50 per month flex credit effective January 1st, 2021, extension of vision coverage to employees in currently enrolled in Kaiser, administration of voluntary supplemental benefit program, and cost-sharing decrease for classic members of the unit per CalPERS contract. Um, the fiscal impact is that the projected maximum impacts of the new provisions include the proposed resolution, included in the proposed resolution for fiscal year 1920 is about $31,000. For fiscal year 2021, it's about $32,000. Um, we ask that City Council adopt the following resolution, resolution um, number 2020XX, uh, resolution of the City Council of the City of Fullerton, California, relating to compensation for confidential non-represented employees, and superseding resolution number 2018-11, and authorize appropriation of $30,822 to cover the cost of implementing the aforementioned, aforementioned resolution. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Okay, seeing none, I am noting you wore no St. Patrick Green tonight oh, that I good. see. There you go. <laughs> I knew. I knew you had it in there. That's awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Are there members of the public who wish to speak on this item? Were there any e-comments uh, submitted? No. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council. I'll move the item. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes five to zero. And now we'll move on to um, ratifying the resolution uh, declaring the existence of a local emergency. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of Council. Um, yesterday morning, in keeping with the uh, public health crisis, uh, I proclaimed uh, with through proclamation number 2020-01, uh, that there is an existence of a local emergency. Uh, per our Chapter 2.08 and under our Fullerton Municipal Code about disaster services, uh, that is to be followed up within seven days by ratification by the City Council. The proclamation and the resolution uh, for consideration tonight allows us to continue to work with our local partners and the state partners and to seek uh, reimbursement for all our activities also provides a little bit more leniency in an emergency basis 
Um, one of the uh, consent items tonight was some additional funding uh, for emergency uh, purposes. And so uh, I ask that uh, if there's any questions, the city attorney is here. Uh, and if there's anything else, I can handle that. But uh, ask for consideration to adopt resolution number, whatever the next number is, uh, to ratify the proclamation declaring the existence of a local emergency. Thank you. Are there questions? All right. Uh, are there, if there are any members of the public who wish to speak on this item, now is your time to come forward and do so. Or any e-comments that might have been submitted? Okay. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to council. I'll move adoption of the resolution. I will second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, I think uh, we've probably encouraged everyone enough tonight um, to be safe and stay healthy and uh, to not take any risks. It's just not worth it. And I'm mindful of the fact that we have many businesses in town who have already had to shut their doors, many more who um, will be looking at alternative business models. Again, Ms. Frizzell, um, who's uh, working on economic development, uh, she and the assistant city manager and I this afternoon spoke with uh, some local business owners who uh, are uh, struggling under the weight of these new restrictions. And I want them and uh, those other restaurants and retail owners we haven't spoken to personally to know that the city wants to stand alongside you during this time and do what we can to support you. Um, and so over the next couple days, uh, you should see more communication from the city uh, about our partnership um, with you. Um, please uh, keep updated by going to the city's website. Uh, especially as there are, uh, will continue to be ways to support your local businesses uh, and, of course, and Paramount um, get updates on health and safety items. Um, but just check back the city's website uh, every day or so. Just to, to piggyback on that, um, the, uh, also uh, it is available in Spanish, uh, the information on COVID virus. And, uh, COVID-19 and also uh, the website has a capability of actually uh, translating into different languages. Uh, but if you need any further assistance on that, um, we can contact uh, our uh, city staff. Thank you for that. And with that, um, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes five to zero. Now we'll go back to item number 10, which was pulled. Mr. Uh, Zara, I think you wanted us to continue this I would item. like to continue the item only because there's uh, so much information in it that I think the public should be aware of um, with a full presentation. Uh, so I'd like that to be continued for another time. Okay. And should we bring it back as a general item, a regular item? Or I, I'd I, I believe it should be a, uh, a regular item because uh, it does involve, with a, with a presentation, because it does involve uh, state laws that not many people are aware of. Um, uh, we are increasing, it seems, the the recommendations to increase speed limits in, in, a, in, a, in a host of cities. So I think uh, it, uh, it requires a host, a host of streets, sorry, uh, and it requires a... Uh, uh, some explanation to the general public. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to that, uh, Madam Mayor, oh, there she is, way back there. Um, what we could do is if we we can continue it to April 7th, I think maybe too, a little too early. I think so too. Um, let's shoot for the April 21st unless there is a deadline we need to hit. No. So right now we'll put it on April 21st and we'll do what we're doing a lot, which is we'll, we'll play it by year. Okay. So well, that's, there's, that's there's really no reason why we couldn't deal with it this evening. Ms. McWade is certainly capable of doing a presentation on what the state requirements are. The reason I had asked for it to be pulled is because there was one um, proposed increase that I, I cannot agree with. Um, but on, otherwise, I mean, it's all laid out here for the public to read. Right, but the public right now is is busy with COVID nineteen, and not many people are watching. We don't True have a enough. lot of people in our in our. Okay. Uh, and we're supportive of that. In fact, we also we're going to WebEx in um, the traffic engineer to explain a lot of things. So we canceled that, uh, knowing that we are going to continue it. So I do ask that we continue it to April twenty first. All right, I can support it then. Okay, was that a second? Yes. It's been moved and seconded. I'll open this item up to members of the public if you wish to comment on this item. And I don't believe there were any e-comments submitted on this item. Okay, I'll bring it back to council then. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, thank you. 
Uh, I believe that brings us to the end of our agenda. I wish everyone, um, again, a happy St. Patrick's Day, um, a day to count your blessings, and uh, be safe and healthy. And good luck.